Today, I'm backtesting a trading strategy that uses the Williams Alligator. I want to see how it's performed in the past. The initial test gave me very impressive results, but as I dug a little bit deeper, I realized there was a bit more to it. Let's start by going over the strategy rules. I'm on the 15 minute chart on the S&P 500, and I have the Williams Alligator indicator on this chart. This indicator is made up of three different lines, which are referred to as the jaw, the teeth and the lips. Each one of them is a different period moving average, but they have some smoothing and offsets applied to them, which is what makes it specific to the strategy. But at the core of it, they're essentially just three moving averages. They've just been tweaked a little bit to make them specific for this indicator. Yours might look a little bit different depending on how you've configured the colors, but the lines by default should all be the same. So why is this called an alligator? Well, the three different lines are supposed to make up the different parts of its mouth. The green line, which is the fast moving average, is referred to as the lips. The red one is the medium, and that's the teeth. And the blue one is the slowest, and that is the jaw. The traditional way to trade with this indicator, and the way I'm going to be testing, is to look for a cross between the fast and the medium lines, which is the lips and the teeth. So the green and the red lines. When they cross over, if they cross from above to below, like in this case, that gives me a short signal. And when they cross from below to above, that gives me a long signal. Let's have a look at a few trade examples. Here I'm waiting for the green line to cross over the red line, which happens on this candle. When that candle closes, that confirms the signal. So I then enter the trade at the open of the next one. So I'll just place a long position at the open here. For the stop loss and take profit, I'm going to use the ATR, which is the average true range. I look at the signal candle and I check what the ATR was at the time, which in this case is 17. So that is what I set the stop loss to. And then I aim for a reward to risk ratio of three to one, which in this case was hit pretty quickly. And for a short trade, the strategy looks for the opposite. The green line, which is the lips, has to cross over the teeth from above. That happens on this candle. So this is my signal. And the next candle is where I enter the trade. This time it's going to be a short position, so I put it at the open. For the stop, again, I'm using ATR from the signal candle, which is 13.2. So I drag down the stop loss to give me 13.2. And again, I'm aiming for three to one take profit. Because this is a trend following strategy, it's useful to know the direction of that trend. And for that purpose, the strategy uses a 200 period exponential moving average. So this yellow line is a 200 period EMA. This adds an extra condition that short trades are taken when price is below the EMA and long trades are taken when price is above it. That means that some of these crossovers would be skipped. Here, for example, there's a crossover. The green line goes above the red, but the price is below the 200 EMA. And that means that there's no trade here. But a little bit further on, there's another crossover. And although the alligator itself is underneath the 200 EMA, the price is above it. So that is still okay, and that would be an acceptable trade to take. Now that I've explained the rules, let's have a look at the back test and see what that gives me as a result. The back test settings are that I'm testing on the 15 minute time frame. First, I'll test on the S&P 500, but I'll come back and test some other things. I've got a starting balance of 100 with 2% risk per trade. The market times I didn't use in the end. I wanted to see whether it made a difference, but it didn't seem to. The trades are held overnight as long as they need to until a stop loss or take profit is hit. Then we've got a 200 period EMA and the trade direction, first of all, is long. After that, I load in my price data from a CSV file and then I can start calculating my various inputs for the strategy. I normally use the Pandas technical analysis library to calculate my indicators, but I couldn't see the Williams alligator in that library. So I had to calculate it myself the alligator is based on median price, meaning that it is the high and the low divided by two. So it's just the average between the two of them. And then it's a smooth moving average. So there's a function up here that calculates that. Each of the lines is a different period. So the lips are the fastest. It's a five period. Teeth are eight period. And the jaw is 13 period. But once those are calculated, they're then offset by a certain amount. So each one of them is shifted. This matches up exactly with the parameters in TradingView. We have the different length for each of the components of it. And then there's the different offsets. Then I've got a few other things that I tested out, but they didn't really give me any useful results. So I'm not going to go over them too much. I'll just skip ahead, but I have left them in the code just for reference. I then have my slow EMA to give the trend filter. 
and the ATR, which I use for the stop loss and take profit. I also tested a swing low for my stop losses, but it didn't perform very well. After that, I generate my various signals for my long and short strategies. So down here, my long signal uses C1, C2, and C4 conditions. Condition C1 is that there's a crossover between the lips and the teeth. So on this candle, lips are above, but on a previous candle, shifted by one, the lips are below. Then condition C2 is that the close price is above the 200 period EMA, that's the trend filter. And C4 is just making sure that there is an ATR value before I take a trade. Now I can skip all the rest and just head straight to the results. This is the equity chart on S&P 500 testing for the last five years. And although the final result at the very end looked really good, I find that it's a little bit deceiving because actually the rest of the time it was pretty terrible. It was very inconsistent, zigzagged a lot and in general had massive sections of drawdown. And if I have a look at the actual metrics for it, the annual return is 90%, but I think most of that actually comes from the last section. The drawdown is 78%, which is huge. Low win rate of 28% with a 3 to 1 reward to risk ratio. So the metrics are not particularly good, especially the annual return, because I think that's quite a misleading result here. I think what's happened is that this period in the second half of 2024 was just very suited to that strategy. So it gave very inflated results. But when taken over the entire time period, it is far less consistent. And I think this is an example of data fitting the strategy rather than the other way around. If I was just to take the period from 2020 to 2024, the performance was pretty poor. I then went back and reran it on Forex. This is Euro USD with all the same settings and a 15 minute chart. And this performs even worse. So initially there is a bit of a spike up the way, but then it's just a gradual decline down to well below where the starting balance was. So then I headed over to YouTube to see what other strategies people recommend. And actually a lot of them were very similar to the one I just tested, but there was one from Trade IQ that gave slightly different rules. So I went back and I retested with those rules. The main difference in the rules is that it doesn't wait for a crossover between the lips, the green line, and the teeth, the red line. The reasoning for that is that by the time this crossover has happened, a lot of the move has already been missed, which makes sense. The idea then is to get in before this move happens. So you almost predict this crossover in advance. And the way that's done is that you wait for the price to cross through the lines instead. In this example here, price is above the green and the red lines, and the green line hasn't crossed the red yet. It does a few handles later, but at this point it hasn't. The strategy then waits for one candle to break through and close below the teeth, this red line, which is the middle moving average, which happens on this candle. So that is the signal candle. And when that happens, we open a trade at the open of the next one. So you can see the big difference here. If you wait for the crossover, that happens all the way down here and the trade is open on this candle. And these modified rules make sure that this part of the move isn't missed out on. The exit strategy is a little bit different as well, which is that it now waits for price to close through the green line on the other side. So here, this trade would be held until this point where the price breaks through and closes above the fast moving average, the lips of the alligator. So the exit would be on this candle and it would be somewhere down here. This strategy still uses the 200 period moving average as the trend filter, just like the original rules did. The main drawback is that there is no defined stop loss, which makes it very difficult to do position sizing. You don't know where to put the stop and therefore don't know how much to risk on each trade. So I tested this with an emergency stop loss of five times ATR. The idea is that I still don't want the stop loss to get hit, but it gives me a fail safe and it allows me to size up the position accordingly. And this is the backtest result for that updated strategy. I still don't think this is very good. It's very jaggy and all over the place. And if I have a look at the metrics, the annual return is pretty poor and it has a big drawdown. There may be other ways to trade this Williams alligator, but in all of my testing so far, I haven't found it to be a very reliable indicator. But if any of you have had success with this or you have any tips on how to use it, maybe in conjunction with some other indicators, then let me know and I can try and retest this one again. If you found this video helpful, then don't forget to subscribe for more trading backtests.